Good morning from Guam. I hope I'm actually, it says I'm live. Maybe it'll take a few minutes. I'm just trying to, okay, it's counting down. Be here on time and give time for people to join. And I don't know if I can see comments. There's a comment section, but anyway, <laughs> I'm assuming that it's working because the live is counting down. So, well, now it is indeed the time I'm to be here. And if anybody's out there, yeah, I, for some reason I can't see comments coming up yet. Um, my name is Connor Kelly. I am currently living on the island of Guam, which is part of the Micronesian island, no, part of the Marianas Islands, but in Micronesia. It is a U.S. territory, so we are here because my husband is a school psychologist, or he is at this time. Anyway, he's been many other psychologists. <laughs> And uh, today, I thought that we would um, play with body metaphors. And to start out, I really want to give you, you know, time to just be where you are right now. You know, feel the ground underneath you. And in my work through the Dance Therapy Association of Australasia, we always say um, to give thanks to the original custodians of the land where you are. So I acknowledge the Chamora people that are allowing me to stand on their lands and to live on their lands in the moment. And you may have people you know who've been caretakers of the land before you, past, present, future. So we acknowledge that as we begin. And just feel yourself wherever you are in the world, whatever floor, or if you're outside, or that you are really grounded into where you are, feeling that root system, even if you're not actually on grass and ground outside, I want you to really see if you can feel that. I'm sitting at the moment. I like to do this standing too, but I put my hands on the ground because there's something really nice about that. And I um, just want to say that it's a privilege to be here and I really hope this is working because I am not, the comments aren't coming through for me. So hopefully <laughs> when I finish, I'll look back and see that indeed this has happened. So our body, you know, is continually regenerating and in this particular life. This is the body that's going to carry us through the life. And we're going to have many journeys with our body, many unpleasant experiences, many pleasant experiences. And I just want you to pay attention to what you need for today. If you need to lay flat on the floor and just belly to the ground and rest that way, do that. If you need to, to sit or lay across a ball like this, just do that. You know, whatever you need to do. So anything I'm offering today is going to be just suggestions and offerings. And you can play with that 
in any way that works for you. So we're going to start with a body warm up. And I'm standing, but you can be down on the floor. And just, I want to just go through the joints a little bit. So if it's easy for you, you can start either with your toes or you can start with your hands. And I'm, I will guide this a little bit, but you can do it in any way that works for you. So I'm just going to start articulating those fingers and those hands, and I might want to just sort of press them together or press them one way or another, just because for me it's morning. For you all, it's going to be later in the day, but for me, it's morning. So I'm needing to wake up my body. So find how the hands and the fingers start to move through the wrists and the forearms and then into the elbows and then they can come into the shoulders and once the shoulders begin moving you can start to move through the spine a little bit you can start to play with just a little bit of head movement. You can just move the chin up and down, side to side, or you can roll it, you know, so we carry a lot of stuff in the neck. So one of the things I like to do sometimes is just take my hands on the back of my head and just stretch it one way and the other just to stretch out the neck. But whatever feels good to you. So we've been working through the hands to the shoulders, getting a little bit of movement in the neck. And now perhaps if you're okay in the spine, you can just take a little bit of a roll through the head and the tail. You might want to put a hand on your back if that helps. But that's just going to wake up places in the spine and we know the spine besides you know that forward and back motion can start to move a little bit in other directions so just move for comfort move to what feels really good in your body as you're waking it up now i'm just going to say if you want to add music please put on some music I didn't want to add music because um, Facebook is funny and it might just turn down my volume if that was the case. So that's why I'm not adding music here. So you can take that spinal movement and really get into the hips. If that doesn't feel right for you, you can just move slower. So always, 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 you can slow down, you can pause, lay on the floor, you can take a break, you can take a breath. So anyway, now I am just moving into my pelvis and then into my legs. So that starting to articulate up through that thigh and into my knees, into my calf muscles, and then into my feet. And you can kind of work the other way. You can start moving some toes. It's fun to, you know, use something to stretch the toes in. And then the ankles and the shins and the knees and the upper thigh. So, whatever feels good in your leg and shaking shaking is a great way anytime anytime during the day where you've been doing an activity or doing something and you need a pause and you just need to shake it out so shaking is a really good movement other movements that are really nice are brushing 
brushing is a nice movement. You can tap or nice little massages. I'm just wanting you to wake up as much of your body as you can. So I just find sometimes those tapping or just brushing. Some of you may want to just brush off the day, what's been happening for you earlier. For me, like I said, it's morning, it's very early morning and I'm just trying to wake up the body. So now that you're kind of waking up the body, just see for a minute how your body wants to move. And then we're gonna play with some body metaphors. And since for some reason I can't see comments, I unfortunately can't integrate yours. But for the last, oh, I don't know how many years, I've been collecting body part metaphors. Um, and it's fascinating. Every time I do this with a different group, I get new ones. So I have this running list where I bring it in. But today, because I know a lot of you are carrying a lot of uh, responsibility, what is it like when we feel the weight of the world on our shoulders? So when we have the weight of the world on our shoulders, how does it get us to move? And you may have a completely different experience for me. I'm feeling a lot more rigid. I feel kind of pressed to the ground. And so you may feel that as well. And so see what that does to your body when you really feel the weight of the world on your shoulders. I feel myself slowing down because in order for me to carry all this weight, I need to focus on slowing it down. I mean, I could try to speed it up and then what happens? So if you're carrying the weight of the world on the shoulder, how does it affect your breathing? How does it affect other parts of the body? And how does that just really stay in your body? And then what if we move into one that came up with a group recently, lazy bones. What happens when you feel like you're just lazy bones? So we're going to move between these two to see what they're like. So for me, lazy bones means, you know, I'm kind of boneless. I'm not really holding myself up much and I kind of have a certain fluidity. Now, lazy bones might be something that a parent tells a child, you're just being lazy bones today and you're not getting things done. But there's sort of an extreme going from lazy bones into I'm carrying the weight of the world on my shoulders. So if I'm carrying the weight of the world on the shoulders, can I start to take that weight somewhere else? Okay, I'm really carrying on the shoulders. Can I, for instance, put it in the biceps a little bit? Can I bring the weight of the world a little bit more in my arms? Can I bring it more like and how big is it for you right now, what you're carrying? Is it really weighty, really heavy? Does it really feel like a load? Does it feel like yours? Does it feel like your world you're carrying? Are you carrying other people's world? So just play around with, am I carrying my world? or other people's world. And what if I was to take that caring and put it somewhere else in the body? What if I put it to my knee, for instance? How would I carry things on my knee? You know, what would that do? And you might find somewhere else to carry it. What if you carry it on your back? 
What does that feel like? So take a few moments and really play with what if you take that load somewhere else? If you take it into your thighs, what if you take it onto your back? What if you take it into your arms and really feel that whole weight in the body and not just in your shoulders? And then there's there's something from this carrying the weight of the world where you can just maybe take one little bit out of this pile and just put it down for the moment? Or do you want it sort of slowly offloaded for a moment? Or do you still need to hold on to it? So just notice if you play with how much am I willing to carry and hold right now? And what do I need to just put down right now? So just go back and forth with that. Do I want to carry more? <laughs> or do I want to carry less? So just give yourself a chance to play with what is my load? What is my load? What am I willing to carry? Right now for me, it feels like I want to feel that real shift. And I really want to feel my pelvis and my legs supporting me. So can you Find the support in that pelvis and the legs. And sometimes another bo uh, metaphor, body part metaphor we have is she has a backbone or <laughs> she has a spine or she's spineless. So you've got both. A lot of these body part metaphors have a, a sort of a negative connotation. It's a way that we're frustrated with somebody often and we say, oh, she's, they're spineless. <laughs> but what if we take that to the opposite? And what if we really do find our spine? We found the legs that can support the weight. And then what if we really go into finding that spine? We have a spine. And I like to think of it as a spinal column. And one of the books I've recently read from Liz Cook about the psoas is that it's like a river. So if we think of our psoas and our spine and our core like a river, can we find that river quality? And as you're moving, maybe there's some other body part metaphor that might come up like standing on my own two feet. In fact, we were sort of alluding to that when I was suggesting we take the weight and bring it into the pelvis and our leg. So how do we stand on our own two feet? Can we move forward and back? Can we move side to side? And you can go very slow and create a pattern, or you can just really speed it up and feel what that dance is like standing on your own two feet. How do you stand on your own two feet? Sometimes you just want to stand and feel that. You just want to feel, how do I feel grounded into the earth and deeply connected into my root system? So maybe that's helpful. Maybe you just want to move it and you just want to dance it and explore what that standing on your own two feet. And there's some of these body part metaphors that are just kind of fun, like pulling your leg. So I'm pulling your leg. And usually that means, you know, somebody's joking around with you, but what happens when we start to pull our own leg? So 
So you can go back with and forth between standing on my own two feet, pulling my leg, and do you want to go back to carrying the weight of the world? So let's do a little recapitulation. What is it like to carry the weight of the world now? Maybe your world is different. I'm feeling a lot lighter. <laughs> Maybe you're still feeling that heaviness. And then what happens when you stand on your own two feet? And then what happens when you pull the weight or pull your leg? <laughs> you're pulling my leg, you're pulling my leg. So maybe just dance between that. Carrying the weight, standing on my own two feet, pulling my leg. And just let that carry you. Let that be your dance. Maybe you have some really great music that you're feeling that it's carrying you, it's supporting you. And just notice notice what's happening for you in your body in your breath and your feelings as you're doing this and again these are just suggestions you may want to just be resting at this time can you find moving through your whole body finding that real connectedness. So we've carried the weight of our, on our world. We found standing on our own two feet. You say, I'm pulling your leg. And then what about helping hands? How, how in our life are we helping hands all the time? Are we an over helper? Are we always helping out here and not helping in here? So you can help out here or you can help in here and play with how these helping hands can be part of the dance too. So the helping hands go out, but they can also come back in and help here. So again, to recapitulate, we've been carrying the weight of the world on our shoulders, and we were finding standing on our own two feet, and then pulling our legs, and then finding helping hands, how helping hands are often help, 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 out, out, out. But what about bringing them in? Bringing them in to you. So the helping hands can now come to you. And what is it that you need most right now? What is it that you need most to bring in with the helping hands? So, just use your imagination of what you are trying to bring into you. Maybe you have a very specific image, and maybe there's a particular place in the body you want to bring it to. Since we were carrying the weight on our shoulders, it's nice to bring that helping hand to the shoulders, the helping hands to our shoulders for carrying all that weight for us. Maybe there's something else you want to bring into your belly or your hips. Maybe you want to bring into your legs or just bring into your hand. Maybe you just want to bring something into your hands That you can then bring in through your 
face, maybe through your throat, through your heart. So what do I need most right now? What can I really bring in to me? And just play a little bit with those helping hands, what they need to bring to you today. And anytime, you know, you think about it, if you're struggling, you're having a really challenging day, you can say, well, how can my hands help me? <laughs> how can I be the helping hand for me right now? And sometimes it's just taking that breath, just bringing that in with some awareness. Sometimes I like to think about water and just bringing the water in. Of course, I live on an island, so water's all around me. <laughs> so I really like to refresh in the water, but you may have something else. Maybe you really like, you know, clay massages. So you like that feeling of bringing something really onto your skin or just some lotion, you know, maybe that's what you like best. So however you want right now to bring in what you need and just to honor yourself, honor your body, honor your body wisdom, honor your body regeneration nature and really be thankful for everything, the hard yards that your body has gone through and slogged through. the lovely moments that you've had with your loved ones, the times you've had that are very special, but then honoring all those challenges, all those difficulties. And just slowly, you're gonna to start to wind it down Although you might want a little recapitulation of how we took on the weight of the world, we stood on our own two feet, we <laughs> pulled our leg, and now our helping hands have come back to us. So what was in that? little exploration for you and I hope this worked I feel a little bit frustrated that I can't see anything as far as comments even though the live is counting down and says I've been live so I just have to trust the fact that somebody might be seeing this and somebody might be moving with me so however you want to just give yourself thanks for being in this exploration. And you may want to keep a list of body part metaphors and they might come in handy um, for you. There's a lot of wisdom in them. They're kind of sometimes very concrete, but they might really, you know, give you something. Like here's another one that might be really helpful is they say, just put one foot in front of the other. And I know that sometimes that's about keeping going when especially you're in a rough patch. And I don't necessarily believe that that's always the answer. Because as a dancer, you know, we don't just go forward, we go backwards, we go up and down and side to side. So I don't know how that resonates with you one foot in front of the other but may that carry us in the rest of our day or the rest of our evening. 
and bringing our hands, our helping hands to us in whatever way. And I'm really bummed out about not being able to see any kind of comments. It's just kind of not. But I will be happy to comment under your comments later. Um, yeah, it's been really lovely for me to be here. Um, I hope that something resonated for you, uh, that you got something out of it. And um, I have a Facebook page, my E. Connor Kelly Dance Movement Therapy, if you're interested in staying in touch. Um, and thank you for being here. And I guess I'll see what happens when I end the live to see if it actually happened. I suppose I could check on my phone, couldn't I? Um, anyway, I just want to say a little saying I said in a class the other day, you are the one that you've been waiting for. And I'll say it again, you are the one you've been waiting for. So thank you.